benchmark and spread of a bond. Let's say a five-year bond, a corporate bond, has a yield of 10%. Now this 10% can be bifurcated into various segments. These bifurcations, let us say, let's say the country in which this bond has been issued, the GDP of that country is 4%. This is the real GDP. So we add 4% in the rate. Then there is inflation of 3%. So we add the 3%. Now there comes credit risk. The individual business must be riskier than the country itself, the sovereign uh, government itself. So that credit risk we add 1% because of that. Now this corporate is a profitable business so it is taxed in some way compared to a government bond the taxation on this might be higher. So we add 1% because of the tax reasons. Now let's say the government bonds which are on the run are the most popular and the most liquid bonds. So this corporate bond must be less liquid than that government bond. So because of that less liquidity we add 1% more to it, right? So these are basically risk premiums. And these two basically form the risk free rate. Generally a government bond will have this kind of a rate if we are to assume these numbers, right? Government bond of same tenor, that is the five-year tenor. Now, generally what happens is, this government bond is looked at as the benchmark. That is basis which corporate bonds will be compared. And whatever higher yield the corporate bond provides is called the spread over the benchmark right now benchmark can not only be the government bond it can be a swap rate also so when the benchmark is a government bond the spread is called g spread now when the benchmark is a standard swap rate we call the spread i spread Now there is another spread called Z spread. Let us look at what that is. Let's say this bond, we want to discount this bond with spot rates, right? So let's say the current market price of this bond is 95 and the spot rates for year one, year two, year three are Z1, Z2, Z3. Z4, Z5, like that. So we do this. The coupon is 10. Now these spot rates, there is a problem with this. This won't discount to 95. You know why? Because these are the spot rates with respect to a government bond. So a zero coupon, one year government bond is having a spot rate of Z1. Zero coupon two year government bond is having a coupon rate of Z2. Zero coupon three year government bond is having a uh, spot rate of Z3, like that. This means the yield to maturity of a zero coupon three year bond is Z3. Obviously, the government bond is much more risk free than this corporate bond. So, this number is much less Z1, Z2, Z3, Z4, Z5 has to be generally much less than that of the number required to discount the bond, the corporate bond to 95. So we need to add some value to this. Now if there is a constant value, a single value which we can, we can add to all of these values to get to that market value, that value will be called the Z spread. This value is called the Z spread. Now. Let's say this bond also has an option. It can be a call option or a put option. If you take out the value of the option from the Z spread, 
we get another spread that spread is called the option adjusted spread so option adjusted spread or OAS is equal to Z spread minus the option value 